Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to the 31st episode of my second 1 billion iron ingot challenge. In today's episode, I am going to begin to set up my Industrial Craft 2 base, and that's because Industrial Craft 2 has some machines that I can take advantage of to produce lots and lots of iron ore, which I then can obviously parlay into more iron ingots. So let's get started. Uh, first off, I need to make a bunch of machines from the mod Industrial Craft 2. But to make those, first I need a basic machine casing, I think is what it's called. Uh, that is kind of the, the basis of a lot of the machines. And they are made by these iron plates here. Now these iron plates are actually really easy to make. I have made them with my... Uh, shoot, I forget what they're called. I'll just run over here real fast. Uh, these machines right here, um, these compactors. So I have... Uh, Aluminum plates, nickel plates, silver, platinum, gold, bronze, lead, iron, tin, copper, things like that. Anyways, I have all of that already input into my system so I can make all of those plates automatically. So let's grab a bunch of these casings. I also have a bunch of the plates pre-made because I knew I would be needing a bunch of them for this episode. So yeah, I have a bunch of them made. So now that I have a bunch of machine casings, let's see what machines we can make. So first off, I need to make a compressor, and I could have kind of done this in kind of just about any order I wanted. So we're going to need electronic circuits. To make electronic circuits, you, we need some insulated copper cables. Uh, first off, I need to make some copper cables, so I need to make some cutters. Let's go ahead and make some cutters, and I actually can automate a little bit of this. So if I grab the cutter out of here, and then say we go back to the copper cable I should should be able to automate this one thing I do need to do is I need to hit this or dictionary substitutions and that's because the cutter takes damage after each use by doing this it will allow me to use cutters that have already cut at least once and they can reuse those cutters so let's see if this will work I'm gonna make a few thousand of this of these uh, copper wires here because, or copper cables, because I'm going to need a lot of them. So let's go ahead and type in 2000. And it will take a little time to decide how many cutters it'll need, but it looks like it's going to work just fine. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that cutter in there as well. So as we can see, it's kind of bouncing back and forth what, what cutters it's using. And it is making the copper cable, so that's fantastic. So let's get rid of that. Let's go back to our compressor and let's continue. So then I need to insulate the cable and I am going to do with plastic. Uh, it's not the best solution, but I don't really have any source of rubber, so we're using plastic. And that is a perfectly viable thing to use. So let's grab some of that and then let's make the circuits. And we will need to make these, so bada boom. See if we can't make one, because I can also do the recipe for the advanced circuit as well. Cool. Now, I do have a, a an area ready for my Industrial Craft 2 base. It's not just a chunk of barren land. I have it all ready. I just need the machines, pretty much. So here's the compressor. Uh, before I forget, let's grab some blank patterns as well, because I will need more of those. Okay, so the next machine is the macerator. Macerator should be pretty easy to make as well. There it is. Um, canning machines. Something else I need. So there are two variants here. I'm going to use fluid solid canning machine variant in both of them. So I will need... 10 item casings and to make 10 item casings I can either use a metal former which I don't have yet or I can use a hammer I'm going to go ahead and use a hammer so I need to automate the hammer oh and I forgot to turn that off um, because I want to turn that off for the most part so let's grab some sticks because apparently I don't have any of them let's grab a hammer and then we can get 10 plates and let's make the recipe for this and then in addition let's do bronze plates as well because I know I need some of those so let's make this recipe and then we can throw these in here let's 
Okay, canning machine. There we go. And next would be, let's do metal formers. If I can spell it right, I mean, typing is hard, apparently. So metal formers are a little bit more complicated here, but that's okay. There's where I needed the bronze item casings that I just uh, got ready. So I don't actually have any of them yet. So I need to put these patterns in here before I can actually shift click. There we go, metal formers and ore washer. So let's do ore washer now. And I need these motors. I do have the 10 item casings. I knew I would need those. So let's see if I can't, I can't grab any of those. So now we can do that. Next is the thermal centrifuge. And I think this will be the last machine I'll be making. And then we can finally get down to business and start setting things up. So the thermal centrifuge, is a little bit more complicated actually i can't even do this yet because i do not have access to carbon plates or advanced pl alloy until i set down some compressors so let's go ahead and toss this in here and then we can head out to my base actually before i do that i should probably tell my machine or my system to make some of these machines so eventually i need eight compressors i need eight macerators I need um, eight canning machines. I have a list here. That's uh, why my voice might be changing in volume because I'm actually looking at the list. Four ore washers. And I don't know why I did that. And then 16 metal formers. And cool. So let's head over to the industrial craft base. It is in a west wasteland biome, which is a biome added by the mod nuclear craft. It's, I mean, it's, it, I'll just show you. It's, it's unique, I guess. It's, it's kind of like desert, but stone instead. So here's the basement of my building that I built. Um, it's pretty much prepped for machines, uh, other than a few things. I have a couple buildings here. Um, this will house stuff for my uh, applied energistics ME system and then this over here is actually two reactors from the mod nuclear craft now industrial craft 2 uses its own form of energy called electric or uh, energy units I think is what it stands for it's uh, EU for short but we can use nuclear craft fission reactors to actually make EU now that's because the mod nuclear craft has a conversion rate it produces RF and EU. Um, the amount of EU it produces will be 1 16th of the amount of RF it produces. So I think the math, if I can't dig it back out here, is each one of these reactors will produce, and I've lost it. Oh, hang on, it's right here. 1,139 EU per tick. So that's just this divided by 16. So I have two of these reactors. They both have the same fuel. They are both configured the same way internally. Since I've made so many nuclear craft fission reactors so far, I figured you probably didn't need to see me make another pair. So yeah. So let's get the machines and let's, yeah, let's grab them. Because I think they should all be done by now. So compressors. And let's actually get rid of a bunch of this crap right now. Macerators. Uh, canning machines would be next. Ore washers. And then metal formers. So down here, I have an area where I'm going to have all of these machines. So let's uh, start setting them up. Actually, I can't quite do that yet because I need some upgrades first before I really get started. So I need some ejector upgrades. Uh, basically, what some of these upgrades will do is add some functionality to the machines, uh, kind of like base thermal expansion machines have. Uh, so basically, we're adding adding some functionality here. So we need ejector upgrades. We also need transformer upgrades because the amount of EU we are producing from each fission reactor is 1,139 EU per tick. 
that is a decent amount of power and industrial craft uses a kind of unique system um, as far as in terms of minecraft goes for its power and you if you send too much power to a machine without transformer upgrades it will explode and you might even get to see that in this episode because there's a good chance that I screw something up and then overvolt a machine. But, you know, whatever. Can't win them all. So to prevent the machines from exploding, I just need to make uh, transform upgrades for them. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so this right here. Let's do that. Okay, so we just need we just need to put these in here and then we can make the transformer upgrades there we go whoa 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 oh I see what it did I don't know why it did that because that wasn't supposed to go there but it did whatever it works now so I need to make a bunch of these transformer upgrades uh, mathematically I should only need I think three or four transformer upgrades per machine, but I'm going to go ahead and put in five for each machine. So if I can do some quick math here, 16, um, 24, 30, 46, I think I have 46 machines. So let's just call it, let's just be dumb and do 400. That's way more than I'm going to need, but whatever. So those are cooking up. Uh, let's see here. Eventually I want to do overclocker upgrades, but I'm not going to get to that this episode. Overclocker upgrades just make the machines function faster and use more power. Uh, we could also do some energy upgrades. So I think I can go ahead and do that right now. Let's see here. Oh, I don't have 10 cable yet, which should not be a problem. There it is. <laughs> Lost it for a second. So this needs to be with the substitution. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Probably because my all my cutters that I have are damaged. So if I tell this to do it now, it should be fine. Yep. Okay, back to the energy upgrade. Okay, we need the the insulated cable. Where'd it go? There it is. And then we should be able to do the battery, except for the fact it put the wrong cable there. There we go. Okay, cable, cable, cable. Energy upgrade, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so we should have everything, and yes, we do want to use dark oak wood. That is what we have. So how much wood do I actually have? Not a lot, but we can craft it, so that's cool. So let's go ahead and get some energy upgrades. Uh, let's do 400 of these as well. If I can. I don't know if I have enough wood to do that that many yeah I knew it'd be tight so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna wait on all that stuff to craft up that's gonna take a little while so uh, once all that's done I will be right back okay I am back and everything looks to be ready to go uh, one more thing I need to craft before I can actually get everything uh, set up and running is I actually need some sort of cable to transfer the power now the types of cable I already have which are gold cable and copper cable and tin cable are not actually able to transfer the amount of power that I can produce or that I will be producing. So if you look at the little tool tips here, 32 EU per tick, not enough. 128, not enough. 512, still not enough. So what I can do is I can grab some of the uh, glass fiber, I believe it's called glass fiber cable, and this will be able to transfer 8192 EU per tick which is going to be good enough now this is actually it won't be too hard to make I don't think either so for the energy and dust we need uh, 
crush diamonds with redstone now i don't think i have that automated if we go back to i'm gonna have to go back to my other base here uh, because i need to crush some diamonds this won't be very difficult though i just need to grab some diamonds and i need to set up a pulverizer recipe and then we should have that i should probably also do the silver so let me grab some silver as well because i don't think i have a recipe for that either Okay, so where's my pulverizers? Here they are. So let's throw in diamonds over here and then silver. Actually, um, I don't necessarily have to do that. Because I have pulverized silver coming in and going out of my system all the time for my ore processing over there. So let me see if I can't grab that first. I'm sure I'll get it at some point. Okay, maybe maybe that won't work. So if I run over here, I should be able to get some pulverized silver if I go to the second floor. Okay, so let's see. Um, silver. There's some silver. Okay, so next we just have to set up these recipes. So let's actually do the silver first before I forget. There's the silver recipe, and then we can do the diamond recipe. And there we go for that. So pulverizers, do do do. And, okay, so that should, should, should be everything I need over here. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the glass fiber cable. Okay, so this energy dust, pretty easy to make. Uh, let's go ahead and grab it, and then glass fiber cable. It's actually pretty cheap for me, to be honest. So, obviously, that's a good thing. This is the highest tier cable, I believe, in the mod Industrial Craft 2. So, I'm just going to tell the system to make a bunch of it because, like I said, it's pretty cheap. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to run some of this cable. And I have dug out under, under my uh, reactors here, and I actually had this one powered up. That way I could set up the fuel cycle or the... Um, Okay, so that's not ideal. And I want this to be drained of power before I actually hook it up. And that's because when I set down my machines on the other end, they may explode. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and YOLO. Okay, so let's hook both of these up to the same line. At some point, I do want to add batteries, but right now that's just not going to happen. Um... Let's see if we can't just take this like straight across. Yes, okay, that'll work fine. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do to make this look better. I can't like facade it up or anything, but whatever. It'll be fine. And I do have an elevator on this street. And this street does have a bunch of conduit underneath. Okay, so my building is actually over here. But I don't actually need it to. Hmm. I think it might be best if I. Yeah, that'll that'll be fine. Okay, so if I just run it like this. And then put my same... Okay, I need to get rid of some of this extra stuff. Put the sand back. Okay, that's good enough for me. So, okay, so my lines for down here will actually be... My machines will be on this level beside the ME interfaces. I'll have a line right here. Power. And then I'll have a line of power right here 
So along these ME interfaces, I'm going to actually have four machines, uh, one on each side. So let's, let's go ahead and hook these lines up together. That wasn't supposed to go there. Okay, so now everything's all on one line. We just need to connect it up. There we go. Actually, you know what? I don't actually want to connect this up yet. And that's because exploding machines. Because I won't have the transformer upgrades in them yet. So let's get rid of that. That way I can get out of here. Let's start setting up some machines. So first off, I like to do mass raiders. And if this explodes, it would not surprise me because I may have power in the lines. And I'm not sure how industrial craft treats that. Okay, it didn't explode, so that's good. Um, right now, let's just set up the front machines. Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. Do I want to do it that way? You know what? Uh, I'll set up the front machines and then I'll do the rest of the machines off camera. But for right now... Okay, let's just do metal formers over here. And then over here, I need to get power over there. What I can do is I can do this. Um, yeah, I'll just run it under here. And let's see here. Run it under this cable. Good thing none of this will be visible, because it's a mess. And then connect up like that. Perfect. 100% world class right there. Okay, so there's that. I don't know why I didn't get rid of these corners. Then I need to do this as well. Okay, cool. Okay, so the next machines I need are, I did mass raiders and metal formers. Let's do, let's do compressors. And then let's do the fluid canning machines. And then we can do the ore washer. And then here will be centrifuge, but I don't have that ready yet. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to set up some of my upgrades. Actually, let's get rid of some of them for right now, just to clean up my inv inventory a bit. Let's also get rid of, uh, actually, no, I don't want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of that, though. Okay, so I need to configure these ejector upgrades, and by default, they just auto automatically output to just any side, but we can actually change this. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. First off, I need, um, I'm going to need 12, and tw I'm going to need 12 for each, so. Okay, so let's set up the first 12 to be, how, I, how, how I'm doing this is I'm holding left shift, and right clicking. So by doing that, I will automatically output to the top side. Let's set these to automatically output the bottom side. And then I need to do south side and then north side, I think. Cool. So this machine right here, I need to output to the north side. So yes, these are the ones I need to use, but first I need to put in transformer upgrades. I'm using my mouse, my mouse uh, roller to do that. And then I can also do the ejector upgrade that way. So let's do five and one. And what I'm gonna do for all of these machines is I'm going to give them transformer upgrades and then ejector upgrades as necessary. Over here, we need the uh, south side. So five, only need one injector upgrade. Although adding more might speed up the, the rate of ejection. I'm not really sure to be honest. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to add more machine. Oh, whoa, whoops. 
I wasn't aware I was standing on my teleporter. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more machines. Um, for example, I'll add macerators here, here, um, here, here. Oh, whoops. That's not where they go. Here and here. And then back here as well. And then I'm going to throw in the transformer upgrades and the ejector upgrades as well. And you know what? I'm going to probably go ahead and do energy upgrades as well. So I didn't throw those in here, but I'll probably do five per, per machine. So I'm going to place down all the rest of my, my machines that I have with me and put in all the upgrades. And once I have that done, I will be right back. And finally, I have all of my machines configured. They all have the transformer upgrades, ejector upgrades, and energy storage upgrades that they need. On, on a couple of the machines, I actually needed to make a, a few more changes. On the metal formers, for example, the metal former actually has three different modes. I have two of the metal formers or two of the sets of metal formers. So, um, yeah, these four machines that are around the Emmy interface, which is uh, hidden behind this block, they're all on hammers. These four are also on rolling, I guess. These four are on extruding, and these four are also on extruding. And then over here, I have some fluid fluid solid canning machines and there are different modes for these guys these will be on the regular canning mode but these will be the other four will be on the fluid enrich mode as you can tell by this so there are a few recipes i would like to set up today before i wrap up this episode um, one of which is the compressor i would like to uh, get that going so the compressor recipe is uh, let's just type in energy crystal. It's this right here. So we need nine energy dust and Let's actually get rid of that um, Okay, so we actually have enough right now. So let's get nine Let's set this recipe. Oh And it's actually time to plug everything in so let's see here back here should be my power somewhere Actually, I need to go up, don't I? Okay, so if nothing explodes, that means I got all the transformer upgrades in the right locations. If something explodes, it means I missed some transformers somewhere. So here goes nothing. I don't hear any explosions. That's fantastic. So let's see here. Oh, it's because my reactors are off. So it does look like they are getting some power. Let's actually go over here and turn them on. I do have enough fuel to power these things all the time, so let's go ahead and crank it up. Oh, and these machines can hold a lot of power. I should have mentioned that because of these energy storage upgrades. Yeah, they all can hold a lot of power. So I need compressor. Boom, let's get that going. And that should take a little while since I don't have overclocker upgrades. I will probably try to manufacture those over maybe between episodes. Um, they're pretty simple except for these coolant cells. The only difficult thing here is to get this ITC2 coolant. And we make that in the fluid canning machine by adding lapis lazuli dust to water. And actually I need to set up water before the end of this episode. but. Okay, so let's see, the energy crystal is made, so fantastic. That's gonna be our recipe, and we should have the compressor right here. Fantastic, so if I go in here and say, I want some more crystals. If I am like, hey, make me 20 of these things. It should, should, should start crafting. So if I find my compressors, somewhere, one of the, there we go. This compressor's churning now. And because there's actually four compressors for each ME interface, it should speed things up, especially when I want to make large amounts of certain things. It should just be a lot faster since I have more machines. But anyways, let's set up the water. And I need water for uh, this set of fluid solid canning machines and all of the ore washers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab... Let's do the compact water sources. I don't need a huge amount of water. I don't need the dense infinite water surge. I think that would be overkill. But let's grab these. And then let's grab some uh, conduit here. Um, yeah, some fluid conduit. 
And, okay, water. Got one of them. So I'm going to obviously need some facades, but... Okay, where would be a good place to put this? You know what? I think uh, literally just right here might be a good spot for this. And I might only need one of them if I... Okay, so yeah, we have water going into here. Um, and let's set these to be all just insert. This can be extract always on. Okay, so that's those, and then I need these as well. And I think I can just not do that. Whoops, I need those block spaces. Or one that one block space, I don't need all of them. So I actually need to kind of go around here. I just need to bring this up beside and then tell this to extract always on. So all of the machines that need water, they should be getting water. So that's fantastic. Okay, so I wanted to set up the thermal centrifuge before I forget, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so thermal centrifuge, I could not... Okay, I need to make the advanced alloy first, so I should probably do that. And then, let's see here. Okay, it's one to one. I wasn't sure what the ratio was. Okay, so compressors. Let's drop half of them in one and then half in the other. Okay, so this needs to go up here. Okay, so we have the advanced alloy, it's ready to go. Just put this in the compressor and we want to put it in the other set of compressors. Now we can get on with the centrifuge. Okay, what am I missing? Energy crystal. So I don't know why that doesn't wanna go in there, but that should work cool. Okay, what is that called? Mining laser. And that should craft up. Then I need to make the advanced machine casing. I need to do the carbon plates. So to make carbon plates, we need pulverized coal. And then I think, whoops, that's that recipe. And then to make the advanced or the carbon plate rather, we need raw carbon mesh and it is a one to one ratio. Okay, so I actually wanna make a few more carbon meshes real fast. And they should craft up real quick. Nothing special about them. And then we can make the carbon plates. And then I think I have everything I need to actually make this centrifuge. Think, 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 think. There we go. So I think we'll use this compressor or that set of compressors. Okay, let's see here. Oh, I don't have the steel plates, do I? That actually shouldn't be a problem, but I need to, I actually want to set this up at my other base with the uh, thermal expansion machines, but for right now, I'm just gonna use a hammer. And I should have some steel ingots laying around. Should be able to do this for right now. Okay, so there's that. There's the machine frame. 
Let's see. I think that's everything. It is. Fantastic. So I want to make four of these bad boys. And before I actually uh, throw this down, if I throw it down right now, it will explode because it will be overvolted. I need to disconnect this again. And then I need to drain the power from the system. So we'll whack this away. And then I need to run some of these machines to drain the power out of the lines. So let's grab some... Um, Let's grab a bunch of these. So let's grab a hundred of them. Oh, I only grabbed, yeah, not a hundred. Oh well, it should be enough. And hopefully, okay, that should keep going down and down and down. That should be all the power of the system. So let's grab these centrifuges. And I actually, do I have enough upgrades? I do. I do have enough upgrades. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the first one down and hope it doesn't explode. Cool. No explosion. Okay, so five. In what direction? I need north. North. Energy. Let's do five. Top, energy, there they are, cool. And then bottom, energy, and then south. And I think that's gonna do it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover everything up. I can use facades there. I'll go ahead and do that off camera. But for right now, I should be able to hook this back up. No explosion, so that's good. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. In today's episode, I set up a bunch of machines from the mod Industrial Craft 2, which will give me a good foundation for actually diving deeper into the mod so that I can build some interesting machines that will help me get more iron ore and therefore more iron ingots in the near future. So as of right now, I have 7 million iron ingots, which is, yeah, pretty exciting. It's a lot more than I had last time, which means my rate per day is getting up there. It is, I think, somewhere around 2 million iron ingots per day, which is pretty fantastic. Anyways, if you liked today's episode, definitely give it a like. If you enjoy watching automation type stuff in modded Minecraft, definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom 8 and I will see you next time.